and I was just crying. I was just crying because I hated the struggle. I hated that I couldn't do it because I felt like I should be able to do it. And I hated most of all that I'm trying to earn income for my family and it just couldn't make it happen. Live your faith, build your business, and change your world. This is Live, Build, Change. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Live, Build, Change. Live, Build, Change is kind of a funny name if you don't know what it means. It means we are aiming with this podcast and the associated website to help people live their faith in an authentic, genuine way. So this is a Christian podcast, Christ followers who want to live an authentic faith. That's who we're targeting. And we're helping you build a business at the same time, integrating your Christian faith with good business practices, smart business practices, with ethical business practices, so that you can change your world. That's the live, the build, and the change. And by changing your world, we mean changing your world through the finances that your business is able to generate, not just taking care of your family, not just you know meeting your bills, paying off debt, those kinds of things, which are obviously the first step you need to do to be a good steward of the revenue that a business produces. But beyond that, to make a difference in the lives of real people in your world and in the world around you through ministries and things like that. So there are all kinds of ways that could look, but that's our goal here with the Live, Build, Change podcast. And today I want to start out by telling you a story from my own experience about sales and marketing and about how I hated sales and marketing. It didn't feel like it was a good fit for me. And what I've learned as I've built my own business about those kinds of things. Okay, so the story goes like this. Back when my wife and I were first married, my kids were very little. I think I only had two kids at the time, my son and my daughter. And I was struggling to figure out what it was I was supposed to be doing in the world, you know? So I was taking on different roles at different companies, trying to figure out different things. Well, one opportunity that I had was one that my father-in-law brought to my attention. He has been a salesman for his entire life and has done a very good job at sales. We joke all the time that he could sell, you know, anything to anybody at any time. And by the way, he's a great evangelist as well. So he is very skilled at helping people understand concepts and actually buy into those concepts. And so he brought to me this opportunity to sell advertising with a company he was working for at the time, and he was doing quite well with it. And so I decided to talk with the owner of the company and see if there was a way that I could get on board because quite frankly, we needed the income and I had to figure out a way to generate some income. And so I went through the training I went out with my father-in-law quite a few times, watching him do the cold calling to business owners, trying to sell this advertising to business owners in the local community. And when the time came that it was time for me to go out and do the sales myself, what I discovered was this. I hated it. I just absolutely hated it. I don't know what all was going on, but there was something inside of me that just could not overcome the barriers that I had of going into an establishment where there's a person in a position of authority, like a business owner or a manager. And I am coming in trying to persuade them to spend money on what I have to offer them. And it just felt unnatural to me. It felt like it didn't fit my personality. It felt like something that I was trying to force and make happen that just really wasn't me. And I remember the breaking point for me was one day I was sitting in my car outside a business as I had been many times and been rejected many times. And I was just crying. I was just crying because I hated the struggle. I hated that I couldn't do it because I felt like I should be able to do it. And I hated most of all that I'm trying to earn income for my family and it just couldn't make it happen. Now, that's one of those situations where I would say I was in a role 
that didn't fit me. It didn't fit my personality. It didn't fit who I am as an individual. You may have heard me talk about more recently, I took on a role as a mortgage loan originator. And out of that, God did some very great things. You can listen to the zero episode at livebillchange.com slash zero to hear some about that part of the story. But I stepped out of that particular role because it had an element of that kind of sales to it that was just hard for me to do. It just didn't feel like it was the right fit for me. Now, having said all of that, I have to say this. What I've discovered in building my own business is that marketing and sales, first of all, those two are not the same thing. We'll talk about the difference here in just a moment, but they are things that we easily think wrongly about, and there are various reasons for that. So in the rest of this podcast episode, I want to talk to you about marketing and about sales and about the beliefs we have about those two things that hinder us from doing them well. And also some mindsets we can use to enable ourselves to do the marketing and do the sales we need to do in order to make our businesses thrive. Okay, well, let's start out talking about the difference between marketing and sales. And I know that out there on the internet, you could probably Google the difference between marketing and sales and get some really punchy, good distinctions that sales professionals and marketing professionals make. But I've just kind of simplified it in my own mind. This is how I think of it. To me, marketing is the act of putting your product or service out in front of the public eye in an appealing way. That's it. You're not really trying to sell someone necessarily. You're just trying to gain exposure for your product or your service. So they may be advertisements. They may be Facebook ads or a video where you're describing the benefits of your product, but it's not necessarily driving hard for a sale. Now, given what you've heard me describe about my experience in the sales realm, you might not be surprised to hear that I don't really have that hard of a time with the marketing side of things especially when it comes to internet businesses, because there's a sense in which you're able to market from a distance. You don't have to look at your potential customer in the eye. You know, you're, you're kind of hidden behind this digital image or, or email or marketing message on an advertisement, you know, but because I'm a teacher and because I'm a writer, I do like the challenge of writing the copy or the text that goes with a marketing message. I do like the challenge in a creative sense of putting together images and text in a way that they actually draw people in to read the actual copy. And I enjoy writing it in a way that it's persuasive. And I have to admit, I'm not the best at it, but I've learned a lot about it. I've been reading about it, studying about it. I've got an online friend, Donnie, who lives up in Chicago. He is like an award-winning copywriter. I'm thinking about inviting Donnie onto the show. He's a brother in Christ, inviting him onto the show to talk about copywriting in a later episode so that we can kind of get our heads around what does it mean to write good copy and all of that. But back to the story. My point is I, I don't have such a hard time with marketing in particular because I just view it as getting my message out. Now on social media and in the digital world we live in, you have to be careful about how you do it. Because if you market to people, and some people would call that make your pitch to them, without any kind of relationship, you know, we're in a day and age where that's becoming harder and harder to do. You know, it's got to be just the right thing at just the right time, meeting just the right need for you to be able to market effectively to someone who doesn't have a relationship with you already. Now, having said that, let me say this. Good marketing, I believe, opens the door to a sales conversation. Okay, so here we go. I guess we should go ahead right now and just talk about what does it mean to say we're engaging in sales. In my experience in building and running my own business, sales is the act of actually having a conversation with someone who is a legitimate prospect for what it is you have to offer. Now, let's define some terms there for a minute. A prospect would be a person who has a need for what it is you're offering. So whether that's a product or whether that's a service, they actually do have a need that your product or service could meet. And so sales is the process of having the conversation with them 
about the benefits that your product or service could bring to them. Now, that's the simple definition. But when we step into those kinds of conversations, all kinds of things start to happen in our minds. All kinds of things start to happen in our emotions. And that conversation can become a lot more intimidating than it really needs to be. You see, because marketing kind of opens the door to that conversation. Marketing puts your product out there in a way that your prospect, the person who really needs what you have to offer, sees it. They start to think about it. They recognize their need and see that your product or service might actually be able to meet that need, but they're not convinced yet. Okay. They're not a sold customer. Okay. And that's where it transitions into sales. So say that prospect sees your advertisement. They might click on your call to action or whatever. They may respond to your email that you've sent and they say, I want to know more. Everything beyond that I want to know more action falls into the sales realm. It's where you begin interacting with that person or that purchaser. Maybe it's a manager in a company or something like that to discuss what it is you can provide to them. And that's the sales aspect of marketing and sales. Sales is where we all get nervous. Like I said, it's where all kinds of goofy things start to happen in our thinking. And so I want to go on into the next section and let's talk about what are the things that prevent us from doing sales well? What are the beliefs we have about it that inhibit us from being effective? And what are the mindsets we can start adopting about the sales process that actually will benefit us and help our businesses to thrive? Now, I think, first of all, what we need to do when we're talking about sales is to clearly define what sales really is, because we get all kinds of false beliefs in our own minds about what sales is, and it comes from different experiences that we've had. Now, in my case, back in my story where I was talking about taking on the sales job, I think it would have benefited me tremendously if someone trained in sales with a right perspective about sales would have taught me some things that I needed to know about what I'm really doing. Now, my father-in-law may have done those things back then, but I probably just wasn't in a place to hear it or to actually learn it because I was too afraid and it was a crunch time. I was in the cauldron, so to speak, where I had to make this work. And so my emotions were all worked up. I was, I was in a frenzy, so to speak. And I was thinking according to these patterns I had already developed about sales. Well, what were those patterns? Well, first of all, For example, I hated going into stores at the mall because it felt to me like there was a bunch of vultures sitting around waiting to pounce on me. I mean, you've had that feeling at a a store in the mall, right? Or at a car lot when you go to look at a car. It feels like the salespeople are just waiting to pounce on you. The minute that you get there, someone's coming up talking to you. Someone's coming up asking. And in my personality, I would rather just kind of browse around and look at things and think it through on my own. And if I have a question or if I am interested enough in the product to really feel like it might be a possibility for me, then I'm ready to talk with someone. And so as I approach sales, I tend to project that feeling onto the situation and onto the salesperson who's coming to talk to me. And I think to myself, I don't like to be pushed. I don't like the pressure. I don't like this. And oftentimes there really isn't the pressure that I think there is. I just feel the discomfort. And so I imagine that this pressure is there. And I I actually make myself feel pressured. When the salesperson usually is doing a fine job, they're not really pressuring. They're just trying to help me. And that brings me to the point of uncovering what good sales really is. Do you know what it is? Sales really is nothing more than helping people meet a need or solve a problem that they have. It's really nothing more. You see, the people who are looking at your product or service are looking at it for a very legitimate reason. They have a problem or they have a need that they need met. And your product or service has caught their attention. Maybe it's through your marketing, but Regardless of how it happened, your product or service has come on their radar and they see it as a possible solution to their problem. 
Now, there's nothing pushy about that, is there? This person has a legitimate need and they're looking to you and your product or service to examine, to explore, to investigate whether or not what you have to offer can actually solve the problem that they have. Nothing pushy about that. There's nothing that needs to be pushy about that. I can have a conversation about what it is I provide calmly, without any nervousness, without any pressure. And this is all mental stuff. This is all in my own head. I have to convince myself because it's true that there's nothing untoward or pushy about sales if I do it right. Underlying a good sales approach, I've learned this in the last four years, is a real desire to help people. I mean, truly to help people. It's not about pushing people to do something they don't want to do, which is often the impression we have. That's not what sales is about at all. Sales is genuinely about helping people. You see, I've talked a little bit in the past about the free enterprise system and how capitalism works in our day and age. And free enterprise, let me just say it again, is where there is a free exchange of one thing for another. Nobody's compelled, nobody's pushed or forced or coerced. Both parties involved in the transaction decide to engage in that transaction because each of them has something the other views as valuable. So in the situation we're talking about, my product or service, a potential client looks on and sees as a valuable thing to them to meet their need or to solve their problem. Okay, well, what am I looking for in this situation? Well, I'm looking for the revenue they're willing to pay me, the money they're willing to pay me for that product or service. And you see, so what they value is the service or the product I'm providing because it meets a need. What I value is the money that they're going to provide to me because that's what enables me to put food on my table. I mean, on a very basic level. And so you see, there's no pressure involved. There's no unseemly side of it because I am meeting their need if I have a great product or service that truly does meet their need. And they are meeting my need. And we're both happy to do it when it's the right kind of a scenario. Now, in order for that kind of a no-pressure scenario, a win-win scenario to happen, there's some things that have to be in place. Number one, you have to have a legitimately good product or service. Okay, you see people who are selling the next big diet craze or the next big uh, workout machine or whatever. You know, we all discover after a while they don't really work like the claims are. And that's part of why sales and marketing have this negative stereotype is because too often fancy schmancy marketers have gotten in there and have trumped up claims that aren't really true. They've overblown their case and they try to convince people they really need this thing when the reality is this thing they're offering really doesn't meet the need they're claiming it meets. You see, and that can't be any part of your process, especially as a follower of Jesus Christ. You need to be presenting your product and your service realistically, truly talking about what you can and cannot do in your service or your product, but also being honest about it. I mean, if your product is the best in the market, you should say it's the best in the market. You should not be shy about that because it's a reality about your product. That's the first thing has to be in place. Your product or your service truly has to meet the need. It has to be a genuine solution to the problem that you're saying you can address. Now, the client or the prospect in this case is going to see that. They're going to come and want to have the sales conversation. You see, now those are really the best kinds of sales conversations. When the prospect has seen your marketing or has seen your product somehow or heard about it from word of mouth, that's even better. And they come to you wanting to talk about what you have because they have the sense it may be able to meet their need. That's ideal. That's a win-win for everybody because then they get to ask you honest questions with an aim toward finding out if what you have will meet their need and you get to provide honest answers. You don't have to be pushy. You don't have to pressure anybody because if it's a right fit, you're both going to know it. 
You really are. And, you know, you can read books on sales techniques and these kinds of things and how to get past objections and all of that. And there is some value in those things. And there is some skill that needs to be developed around those things, because sometimes the objections people bring up are not legitimate objections. It's just that inner voice that they have telling them, I don't want to be pressured. I don't want to, you know, be sold. When in reality, you may not be doing those things at all. You're just honestly answering questions and trying to help them. Okay. So there are some skills to be learned. That's the point I'm getting at. But the sales conversation itself, if you can see it through the lens of being willing to just genuinely help people, I just genuinely want to represent my product or my service in a way that is honest, that's full of integrity, and that accurately describes how I can help them, then that's all that sales is. And if people hear what you have to say, and they decide as the one who has the need that they don't need what you offer, that it's not going to fully meet their need or solve their problem, no skin off your nose. I mean, you've just offered, they've made the decision that it's not the right fit. And you can both walk away happy and even friendly because nobody has been pressured. Nobody has been hurt or insulted through any kind of coercion. It's been a very kind and even compassionate conversation. And that brings me to really the, the last point. It's a re-emphasis of something I've already said, but I want to say it with a little more oomph to it. Underlying everything that I've talked about so far, talking about marketing and sales, is this fundamental assumption I've made about business. And that is this. Business is really about loving and serving people. Okay, that may sound kind of surprising to you, but it shouldn't if you understand that I'm a Christ follower. I want to do what Jesus has said. And and what he has said is the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. We get that part, right? And love your neighbor as yourself. Well, is it possible that potential clients are neighbors? Absolutely. They are absolutely neighbors. They are people that you're going to rub shoulders with, especially if you develop an ongoing relationship with them as a customer, or as a client. You're going to rub shoulders with them. They're going to be people that you are benefiting by providing your product or service. And your aim in all of that should be to love them well. And sales and marketing are tools you are able to use to find more people that you can love well through the provision of your product or your service. So it goes back to that idea of being mindful that your marketing efforts and your sales efforts are really efforts to find people who have needs that you have positioned yourself to meet. I don't know how to say it any simpler than that. That's really what you're doing when you're doing marketing and when you're doing sales. The marketing is finding the people who have the need. Sales is having a conversation with them about their need. And let me just say this is maybe an added bonus here. Something I've learned about effective sales is that the best salespeople are the ones who know how to ask questions. And there's not anything manipulative about that. You're just discovering through your questions if they have the kind of need you've positioned yourself to meet. That's what sales is all about. And so you discover in the process, I mean, say they answer the questions and, and you discover, you know, they aren't exactly the best fit. Out of integrity, you should say so. You should just tell them you're not exactly fitting the profile of the person whose needs our product or service meets. And all that just to say, your customer or client's needs are your main emphasis because you want to love them well. In obedience to Jesus' command, love your neighbor as yourself. So as we apply that to marketing and sales, well, we don't want to create marketing that is manipulative or inaccurate in terms of the claims we're making. That's not loving our neighbor as we would love ourselves. We don't want to do sales in a way that intentionally causes our prospects to feel pressured or like their arm is being twisted, or as is often said, they're being sold. I mean, that's become a negative word. We don't want to do those things because it's not loving our neighbor 
as we would love ourselves. We don't want to be treated that way. So why would we treat them that way? Well, I'm hopeful that this little, I don't know, mental gymnastics I've been doing here, kind of exploring this idea of marketing and sales and how we can think about it as believers that in one sense makes it easier to engage in is helpful to you. If you have thoughts or questions or even lessons learned about marketing or sales, I would love to hear those. You can best connect with me and the rest of the Live, Build, Change community in the Live, Build, Change group on Facebook. And you can find it at livebuildchange.com slash FB. You go there, drop in your email address and sign up. And within 24 hours, you'll be approved and find this particular episode of the podcast in that community and make a comment in the section below that post and share your experience, your thoughts about marketing and sales Whether you've got experience in it or not, tell us your fears. Tell us the things that you find challenging. Tell us the victories that you've had and the way God has taught you to overcome some of your fears in this area. I know it will benefit the entire community. Once again, thank you so much for being a part of the Liberal Change community, for listening. It's my hope that these episodes are helpful to you. And I would so appreciate it if you would pass the word along to someone who you know could benefit from the things that are being shared here on the Live, Build, Change podcast. You can do that using the device you're using to listen to this episode right now. If you're on a smart device, you can swipe right or left from the, from the page where the episode is, and you can share this via text or via email with a little personal note to that person who's on your heart right now that you know could benefit from these things and tell them why you've shared this with them and how you think they'll benefit. You could really make a difference in someone's life by helping them to get off the bench and into the game so that they can better live their faith in an authentic way and begin building a business that could potentially change the world. I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning on the Morning Mindset Edition of Live, Build, Change. Live, Build, Change.